Hey, it's Christy Hines, and you're listening to the 360 Entrepreneur with Jan Ilonga. This is episode 171, and today we talk about guest blogging like a pro. Here we go. Welcome to the 360 Entrepreneur Podcast, the show for entrepreneurs and small business owners who dream big and want to do bigger. Join some of the world's top entrepreneurs, internet marketers, and best-selling authors as they share their inspiring stories, their struggles, and give actionable tips that will help you build, grow, and promote your online business. Here's your host, Yanni Lunga. Hey there, how's it going? This episode is going to help you answer the question, how should I go about guest blogging? How do I get started? Why should I do guest blogging? What are the best practices and all other kinds of guest blogging related questions you may have? We're going to address the topic with Christy Hines, who knows blogging and guest blogging inside and out. The show notes for today's episode are over at Yanilunga dot com forward slash episode one seven one. All right, here is the interview with Christy Hines from christyhines dot com. Hey everybody, in this episode we focus on the topic of guest blogging, and we tackled that a few months ago in a, in a solo session. I remember we talked about the kind of guest blogging one hundred one. But today we are joined by somebody who is like a master. I guess blogging and saying that she's a master, it's really an understatement. She's a freelance writer, content marketer, HubSpot inbound marketing expert, and business blogger. As I said, she's an expert really uh, at guest blogging and she has contributed for places like the Content Marketing Institute, Social Media Examiner, Moz, and Kiss Metrics. And she also has cr- written the post, and I mean the post you should check out if you're considering, okay, I want to attend a business conference. I'm not sure what's happening in my area or somewhere around the world. She's also written the really the guide for business and marketing conferences happening around the world. I'm so thrilled to welcome on the show, Christy Hines. Christy, how's it going? Going okay. How about you? I, I can't complain. And and Christy, you know, it's always interesting about the, the internet and what we do that you are one of the people who you have been on my radar for quite some time. I've been seeing your name popping up really almost Anywhere <laughs> I said it, I mean, social media examiner, content marketing institute. I see, I've seen you on on Twitter, and as I said, your post, the one you written about the the conferences, has been really useful for me personally as well. When I was thinking, okay, I want to go to this type of conference, or I wonder what's happening two months from now. So thank you for that, Christy. Really. Oh, uh, you're welcome. It actually started out as a just a personal resource because I was thinking about you know what conferences are near me, which ones would I like to go to. Right. <laughs> and so I started a little spreadsheet for myself, and I was like, oh, this might have been handy for somebody else. So I turned it into a blog post a year ago, and lots of people liked it, so I expanded it this year, and it just kind of keeps growing in popularity, so I think I'm just going to keep it up. <laughs> yeah, no, you you definitely should, and I'll, I'll make sure to, to link to that as well as everything else we covered in the show notes. So, Christy, I think the first question I have to ask you about guest blogging is, I mean, I said it, you're, you're a, a, not only a blogger, but you're really like a freelance writer. You're kind of a pro at writing. So, can you tell us a little bit more about kind of your your background when it comes to to writing number one and number two why you decided to really kind of put your time and effort into guest blogging because somebody else in your place could have said okay i'm gonna just write exclusively for my own blog um i would say that i really like writing just because i like educating people on a topic and Mm -hmm. it kind of started from a place where i started my blog about for photography and poetry and it started from a place where I wanted people to come to my website to see the stuff I was posting because there was kind of no point in posting it otherwise because you know I didn't want to post it just for me to come and look at and be like ooh, I posted something on the internet (laughs) I wanted (laughs) you know I wanted people to come see it so I started learning about you know like how do you get people to come to your website so obviously online marketing and then I was like oh this is a really an interesting process so I started wanting to write about that to teach other people you know like how do you get people to come to your blog 
And then just kind of one thing led to another. And then I started writing more about the online marketing process and less about the photography and the poetry. And then my own blog became about online marketing. And then from there, it just became like, okay, I need to start writing for other sites so I could get their audience to come back to my blog. And then Mm -hmm. that's how the guest blogging thing started. And then I started from smaller sites and just kind of worked my way up. Okay, interesting. Thank you, Christy, for sharing that with us. And, you know, I say interesting because it's nice to see that kind of it was a process. So it's not that you started online and you thought, okay, I'm going to guess blog for day one. No, you started with your own blog about photography and poetry. And then kind of things progressed from there. And you said now you you have kind of shifted focus or not, I shouldn't say now, but (laughs) over the last few years, you've really shifted focus more toward the digital marketing space. And for people who are here with you and I, Christy, who maybe are thinking about guest blogging, you touched on something that I think is critical. And at the beginning, I mentioned a past episode of the of the show. And there I talked about what I call the guest blogging pyramid. So I shared the concept of, of the fact that often when we start out and we think about guest blogging, we think about, okay, I want to write for uh, entrepreneur.com or Moz or whatever other authoritative site. And we don't think that, yeah, if they uh, if they ask us, okay, do you have any previ- previous experience in writing? If the only content we have is on our site, that's a sign of, mm, okay, this person probably isn't a pro when it comes to writing, guest blogging. And I share the concept of this pyramid where I say, yeah, you should start from the low-hanging fruits, which are blogs that aren't uh, as authoritative, but they're still allow you to make the experience and gather the content and kind of build your repository. So can you kind of share your 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 insight here on on starting as a as a guest blogger? So if somebody's here with you now, Christine, it's like, hmm, I like what Christy is saying. I would like to become a guest blogger myself. What are some of the things you think one should think about and do? Uh, Well, it's definitely important to start, like, the sites you want to write for is just kind of start, obviously, you know, subscribe to them, read the content, so you're familiar with, like, the type of content that's going to be successful, the topics they talk about, Mm -hmm. and really try to network with the people on those sites, so maybe the top writers, definitely the editors, definitely the owner, if possible, Mm -hmm. Um, because the more, like, relationships you build with those people, the better, because eventually, like, hopefully, you know, when you're talking to them they'll start seeing your content they'll start seeing that you're very immersed into their content so one day when you do apply for their site they're going to be familiar with you and they're going to be like oh Mm -hmm. yeah of course i know you of course i know you write great content so sure write for me you know kind of thing like that and um you know definitely look for the opportunities where the sites that'll let you submit you know like any kind of like any content like they just say like submit a post here and mm-hmm. just like write the best post possible, <laughs> like whatever, <Right. laughs> like like just the most amazing post you could possibly imagine. Just like send it over, because there's some sites that like they, you know, like they'll ask you like where have you written before and all this kind of stuff, and they'll research you and then they'll like kind of qualify you and stuff. And there's some like really big sites that'll actually just be like send us a post and if we like the post we'll publish it right and like if you can start with those sites like they could be kind of big sites and if like you could get published there then you could kind of use those as the like the stepping stones to send to another site and say well hey i've been published here i've been published here i've mm-hmm. been published here and then use those as examples and like those sites will be and like the next site you go to they'll be like oh well they've been published there then they're they're probably pretty good <laughs> right yeah <laughs> yeah i mean i think what you share chris is really important because it's all about as you said kind of getting that first post published and then it kind of snowballs from there because it builds social proof we can then use that and you you talked about the importance of building relation well first of all familiarizing yourself with the content of the site or publication you would like to be a contributor for which makes perfect sense you talked about uh networking with people building relationships and is is really important to do that and that's something for example christy i personally did i have two podcasts a second one in the music industry And there, I remember, that's my first podcast that I started a few years ago. When I started out there, I actually 
used guest blogging as a way to grow my podcast. So I would use the the content or some of the takeaway from a specific episode or series of episodes, and I would write a guest blog based on that. So I would link to that episode. And then obviously I would have, you know, case studies, research and things like that, that weren't only, which were basically the post wasn't just about, yeah, check out the interview. It's a great interview, but it was definitely mentioned there. And that really helped me build social proof. So thank you for sharing your advice. And you touched, Christy, on the importance of the quality (laughs) of the content. And I think there isn't really much to say there because it's really a no-brainer. And uh, when you you look at your uh, guest blogging journey, guest blogging career, or even at other people in your space or even different industries, what would you say are kind of some of the guest blogging best practices, the do's, the don'ts? Uh, Well, definitely go, like your approach should always be, I'm doing this for the site I'm contributing to, I'm not doing this for me. Because there's Mm -hmm. a lot of people, like when they send out a guest blogger request, it's because I own a blog myself, so obviously I get these. It's just like, I've written for all these sites, and I want to do follow link to my blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. Right. And, you know, it's <laughs> like, and, and it's just kind of like I'm automatically just like, no, you're out for yourself. And then I get some requests. It's just like, hey, I've read your blog for a couple of years, and I noticed you haven't covered this kind of topic, and I think your audience would really like it. And then that's kind of a request that shows me that like they're out to please my audience, and that's mm-hmm. that's the kind of guest blogger I want. And that's usually what, you know, other blog owners want is like somebody who actually knows their audience and actually wants to create content that's like good for their audience. So that's really what what you really want to aim for is like, think, what good can I do for the site I'm contributing to? And if you go in it with that approach, then you're going to be a lot more successful than thinking, well, what am I going to get out of this kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I'm I'm sure, Christy, you have seen your share of kind of uh, wrong pitches or pitching done, done the wrong way, haven't you? Oh, yeah. I mean, like, I've, I've been offered, you know, like, I'll pay you $50 to publish this so long as you give me three links to my website or, <laughs> you know, th- <laughs> things like that. And I'm like, no, that's that's not, that's not how it works. <laughs> or or just like, well, I've already written this, so you have to publish it. And it's like, no, that's still not how it works. <laughs> so it's just, you know, it's just really like, you know, find if the website says I don't take guest posts, you're, you know, mm-hmm. Just accept that they don't take guest posts. Or if the site has specific guidelines, you know, make sure you've read the guidelines, make sure you follow the guidelines, you know, make sure you, you know, just follow every single step as like as closely as possible. And then make sure that like your main goal is to please their audience, not to get whatever you're, I mean, obviously you do have a specific goal for guest blogging and you are out to get that goal, but don't come off as, you know, like my goal is to promote my business through your blah, blah, blah. So right, (laughs) like, just don't come out and say that. That's that's the worst approach (laughs) ever. Pretty much. Yeah. I mean, Christy, what you just told us, I think, is key because it ties into what you what you shared a couple of minutes ago when you said familiarize yourself with the content of the publication and now you touched on familiarize yourself with the with the kind of editorial guidelines they they may have so that's very important and also you said i mean you have to understand the the audience the type of content that is being shared on a on a site you would like to be a contributor for and also you should put their agenda before your own so you said it obviously everybody has like interests goals and all these kind of things but those should come after those of the of the publication or website we're trying to contribute for i mean i think you you nailed it when you said yeah we have to focus on serving their audience first and then we get uh, good things are gonna come our way in return and i'm curious christy because i said that you have been a contributor i mean i mentioned only a few of the sites you have been a contributor for so for uh for everybody who's here with you and i what is your your take on on guest blogging and obviously everybody is as i said is different so for somebody else it can be completely different but is guest blogging something that you really see as a as a powerful medium to do on a regular basis or is it even a kind of 
a good thing to do even just to write an article for this publication and then an article for that other publication without kind of becoming a quote-unquote columnist. Do you see what I mean? Um, I have found that you kind of got to test it because mm-hmm. um, I found that like if you write once for a site, people may go, oh, that was a great article and they just kind of move on. But if you write like very, like regularly for a site, people become familiar with you and they're more likely to kind of come check out your website or recognize you as like a, you know, maybe a expert on this sp- specific site and everything. So you kind of mm-hmm. get more results if you write more regularly for a particular site. But at the same time, like if you have a specific goal, like I want to get website traffic from all my guest posts, that's something you need to monitor in Google Analytics and just kind of mm-hmm. make sure you are getting that traffic. Or if you're like, I want to get leads to my business from this specific site kind of thing, like monitor it in your analytics. Because obviously, if you're you know out there writing content all the time for a site that's never leading any traffic back to your website, you know, eventually you're going to want to stop and focus on right. the website that... <laughs> you know you are getting leads from eventually so yeah yeah i mean you you said it is important to kind of have clear clear like clarity on what we we are trying to achieve and then keep track you mentioned google analytics keep track of of the traffic or the leads and talking about generating traffic through guest blogging and even leads christy do you have any advice on kind of how to do that the I dare to say the smart way or the the right way. Do you have any advice? Maybe some of the things you have done, some of the things you have written about to get people from a certain website or series of websites onto our own online platform and hopefully onto our email list? Uh, well, in general, you shouldn't try to promote yourself in the main post because that's mm-hmm. that's generally frowned upon in the guest right, blogging yeah. industry in general. <laughs> but um, ideally, you want to write for a site that um, lets you publish a post that's really good and the content kind of flows to a point where, like, after somebody's read the post, they're like, ooh, I want to learn more about this topic. And then they hit that author mm-hmm. bio and whatever you put in the bio kind of lets you... Say like, hey, if you'd like to learn more about this topic, I have a free ebook about blah blah blah, mm-hmm. or my blog covers more in depth about this topic or something like that. So that way, like you know, whatever you're posting about the guest post, like your author bio, just like kind of naturally leads to say, hey, if you want to learn more about this, click through here, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So that would be that that would be the best way to drive traffic. In my case, like my situation is a little bit different. I'm more of a like I'm promoting my business, so so right. my I, my hope is that like somebody's gonna like the blog post so much that they're gonna get down to the bio and they're gonna see, ooh, she's a freelance writer. She could write this stuff for me, right? <laughs> and then get the click through <laughs> kind of thing. But um, in general, I I see a lot of guest bloggers who will do things like they'll write a whole post about like Facebook ads, and then they'll say like. If you'd like to learn more about Facebook ads, I have this like free course or free this, free that, uh, in-depth guides, Facebook ads targeting or something. And that's just a really great way to kind of take them one step farther, get the traffic back to your website, get the email subscriptions, things like that. Okay, so it should really be kind of uh, the the spontaneous next step what we you know the 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 resource or the the thing we link we link to so the example you made if it's about like Facebook advertising and whatever and the free ebook we we have on our site is really the perfect next step it would be kind of or almost a disservice to that audience not to mention it hmm Exactly, yeah. Like, it's still providing a service to the audience, and a lot will just depend on whether, you know, what the site guidelines are, is like, what right. you can link to and what you cannot, or maybe you're just going to put in the bios, just like, I have a blog that's all about Facebook ads or Facebook advanced tips or things like that, and you yeah. just kind of got to hope from there. I mean, really, the big key is just to make sure it's a blog that is going to give you an author bio that's on your post, because there's some sites mm-hmm. that don't, and I've noticed that those are going to be the sites you get the least amount of traffic from. So mm-hmm. if traffic is your goal, then you definitely want to look for the sites that give you the author bio on your post. Um, if if it's something more like authority building, you know, there's some great sites that give you a lot of authority. Just have your name on that site, but you may not get a lot of traffic from them because they give you like a separate 
author page that not a lot of people will click through to. Mm-hmm. And that's where your link is, so you won't necessarily get traffic, but you'll be able to say, hey, I've been published on this site, which kind of boosts your authority. So you really have mm-hmm. to think about your goals before you choose the sites you guys post on, basically. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you you said it. It's all about clarity, people. And, and Christy, I want to ask you about the author bio, because, I mean, you said it, first of all, uh, it depends from it changes from website to website. Some some websites allow you to have the author bio right below the article. Some others kind of it's on a separate page, and not many many people may click on that. And again, everybody is different. Everybody has different goals and so forth. But if we even if we take you as an example, Christy, what would you say? Like if you were to now you you want to become a guest blogger for a couple of new blogs next month. And then they tell you, okay, yeah, you can you can have the the author bio. What what are the things you think uh, you or you would make sure you would include in your author bio? And if if you can link to kind of quote unquote anything, um, I would definitely make sure that like the site you're writing for at least lets you have one link actually in the text of your author bio because some sites mm-hmm. let you like they. They put the link on your name, but like people will think like, oh, if I click on their name, I'll find more posts by them. They don't necessarily think I'll, they'll go to your website. Right. Whereas if you like have like the text, you know, like below it, there's a link in that text that has like your specific anchor text to whatever you're linking to. Like that's where ideally you want that link to be. Mm-hmm. So you want to have at least one link to that. And um you know, if possible, you know, even if you can't link to it, maybe sneak in, like, you know, you can follow me on Twitter at whatever your username is. You don't even have to have a link to that because, like, people know how to get to Twitter just by knowing right. your username. <laughs> <laughs> and even Facebook at this stage, you know, like, it's getting to the point where you can say my Facebook is at so-and-so because they're starting mm-hmm. to use the whole messenger code thing. At, so people can find you on Facebook that way, Instagram, Snapchat, anything like that. So if you want to build a social network while, you know, promoting something else. But really, like, I know some people like to put, like, a ton of links in their author bio, and it's almost better to just have one link. That way people don't have too many options. They'll right. just focus on the one main goal of whatever your goal is, like either to go to your business side or to go to a squeeze page to get your email address or things like that. So I would say definitely that's something you want to look for is just like to be able to have an author bio that says, I am, I am who I am. This is my business. This is why I am an authority. And here's where you could go to learn more about this. Okay. that That's great. Thank you, Christy, for, for kind of walking us through the, the thought process you, you use when it comes to creating the author bio and, I mean, you said it, it's important to try to, again, clarity is always there with us at the background, but it's also important to make sure that we don't give people too many options with, for example, linking to five, six different pages. So we want to ideally to link to the page we want people to go to as the next step, whether that's a squeeze page or or our Twitter page, whatever. And we touched on, on social media and I want to take a second to mention a couple of links. In the show notes, you find the link to Christy's site, christyhines.com. You also find the link to her Facebook page. You find it uh, over at facebook.com forward slash Christy Hines page. So if you have questions for Christy, you want to connect with her, or maybe you would like to hire her, you are really getting value from this conversation. You are appreciating her insight. Maybe you've been a fan of hers for some time. You've read about her her content on different sites you would like to work with her you can do that you can get in touch with her through her site or the facebook page and christy this has been a fun conversation really i'm i'm really personally enjoying it a lot and to wrap it up i want to ask you for some final uh, tips some final insight on on guest blogging something uh, you want to touch on maybe something we didn't touch on um, I would say guest blogging, look at it as a way to build exposure. Mm-hmm. Um, stop looking, like, I know there's still people who look at it as a link building thing, like, right. stop looking <laughs> at it as a link building thing, and just look at it as a way to get exposure for yourself or for your business, you know, personal branding, authority building, and just, like, look at it as a 
opportunity to like, you know, release your best content in front of your, you know, best target audience. Like it's not about, you know, writing for the top publication. It's about writing for your specific audience. Like if, you know, if entrepreneur is at the place where your best customers are going to be reading, there's not really a big point of writing there. I would rather write for a site that, you know, I'm more likely to get hired from than write from that site, you know, Mm -hmm. kind of thing. So that's something to keep in mind. Well, I mean, I I couldn't have said it better myself, Christy. Is is about being deliberate in in our actions. Is is about having clarity and and focusing on the on the target audience that hang around that creates specific websites and publications. And Chris, I want to say thank you so much for being here on the on the show for sharing your expertise for telling us a little bit more about the world of guest blogging and some of the things you think about and do to really leverage the power of guest blogging. I really really appreciate it. Oh, thank you for inviting me. And we are back. Christy, thank you so much for sharing your expertise. And you heard it. I mean, she talked about guest blogging and about how much of a powerful medium it can be. Now is up to you. You have gotten Christy's advice. You've gotten the inspiration and everything else. That's great. But nothing is going to happen unless you take action. So here are the action steps for you. You have probably asked yourself if guest blogging is for you. And at this point, I think you have gotten a clear answer to that. The second step is to start to make a list of the publications, sites, blogs you'd like to be featured on, you'd like to contribute for. And of course, start to check at the editorial guidelines because every site, every publication may have different things that they allow or don't allow. Third action step is start becoming a reader of those publications in case you aren't already. And if you do read those publications on a regular basis, start to go from a simple reader or a lurker, somebody who just reads but doesn't do anything, to a familiar face. So leave a comment, reshare the article, start to become a familiar face. And fourth and final step, once you've done all this, reach out opportunities don't always come knocking at your door. So don't be afraid. Man up or woman up or (laughs) however you want to say it. Really, I believe in you and so should you. So don't be afraid. Reach out to any publication you'd like to contribute for. And if you get a no right now, remember that it's not a definitive no. So in case you get a no, don't worry work harder, hustle harder, and then you'll see that in no time you'll be able to get back, pitch yourself again, and they're going to say, absolutely, we'd love you to contribute for us. This is it for today. Again, for the links to everything, Christina, I've talked about her Facebook page, her sites, and some of the sites she contributes for. Head over to yanilunga.com for a slash episode 171. So this is it. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for taking the time and making this podcast part of your day. And next week, we're going to talk about you. We're going to talk about your body, your mind, your mindset, and performing, and how all these things are connected. And why are they relevant for you as an entrepreneur? All right, Yanni Lunga here from Helsinki, Finland, over and out. Thank you for listening to the 360 Entrepreneur Podcast. For more tips and tools, head over to www.janilunga.com.